This is Will's Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. I'm going to go through Victoria's coronavirus hotspots and the uh, Victorian Department of Health and Human Services has uh, released uh, this infographic uh, on their on their websites which shows it's broken down by local government areas that's what LGA stands for or council areas and as you can see there most of uh, regional uh, Victoria the gray means no coronavirus cases uh, there's the bright uh, green means that there's a very low amount of, of cases there. So there's one up there in Swan Hill, one in uh, Camps there, which is near the Alpine, and then one uh, in the Latrobe Valley. I'll just see if I can zoom in here. As you can see in the Melbourne CBD, uh, there is still a, a few uh, coronavirus-free uh, uh, areas uh, in Melbourne. I've actually got to zoom out here. Uh, so where I reside in the, the city of Frankston, there is no coronavirus uh, cases. Uh, also, uh, city of Monash, uh, where a former studio was, there is no coronavirus cases uh, there. And you can see that it's in the northwest where the hotspots are here. Brimbank, uh, which uh, uh, which is uh, takes in... Uh, the the inner northwest around near uh melbourne airport uh deer park and sunshine uh 20 cases there that's got the highest uh the city of hume uh up here uh, that has got 13 cases uh city of melbourne obviously that includes hotel quarantine that has got 19 and then in the inner north here uh, Whittlesea, Moreland, uh, Darabin in the inner north, and also Mooney Valley is getting bad. Surprisingly, uh, down here uh, in the the, the south uh, west, uh, city of Wyndham, and the city of it's going all over the place. This the, the, this zoom here, uh, this council area here. If it'll bring it up here, no, it won't. Uh, Mar Maribyrnong, that's only got uh, four cases here. Uh, the other hotspots that have been reported, Casey and Cardinia and the, the southeast, they have stabilised as well. Uh, so that is the current state of things. Uh, go, if I zoom, zoom out here, of course this is a government website, so uh, the, uh, uh, the graphics uh, or the interactive map is not going to be. So 138 active cases in the community, uh, three uh, interstate. Uh, so we still don't, it, it's not an alarming amount. We had 20, uh, 20 new cases today. It's the, the eighth uh, consecutive day of uh, double digit increases in Victoria. No other state and territory in Victoria is having these significant uh, increases despite uh, Victoria and uh, Premier Chairman Dictator Dan Andrews uh, uh, imposing the harshest lockdown of uh, any jurisdiction where you couldn't play uh, golf uh, even. Uh, so uh, June 22nd uh, on Monday there, there was going to be a scheduled uh, relaxation of coronavirus uh, restrictions. Uh, cafes and restaurants were going to be able to serve uh, 50 patrons. Uh, that has been kept at 20. However, gyms and cinemas are now permitted to, to reopen and ski season and camping uh, can still take place. However, outdoor gatherings uh, have now been uh, redu or reduced or limited to 10. And the number of guests you can have in your house uh, is uh, five because uh, Dan Andrews blamed uh, large family gatherings uh, for uh, the increase in coronavirus uh, cases, uh, spoken like a true communist, uh, blaming the family. Uh, he didn't mention it at all, uh, the, 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 the Black Lives Matter rallies, the Extinction Rebellion rallies, and the refugee uh, rallies, the math gatherings in uh, Melbourne CBDs, where hardly uh, any of the, the people there uh, were fined. Uh, there are at least uh, 
four uh, cases traced to the the Black Lives Matter uh, rally uh, that occurred uh, on in early uh, June there, which uh, 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 Dan Andrews, the police minister, Lisa Neville, and uh, new Victoria Police Commissioner Shane Patton uh, basically uh, shrugged shrugged their shoulders and said, "Oh, it's too impossible to police and." And, and find people. Now, based on, if you know the, the demographics of Melbourne, uh, the, the the northwest of, of Melbourne, it's a heavy migrant and ethnic area. So is uh, a city of Casey and, and, and Cardinia. And it's basically been uh, conceded now by the Victorian authorities that uh, uh, let language uh, barriers have meant that uh, the message about uh, restrictions and coronavirus might not have got to these migrant communities. So they're sending out uh, liaisons. Uh, the uh, chief health officer of Victoria, uh, Brett Sutton, uh, he said he'd spoken with uh, leaders of, of Melbourne's Islamic community uh, to communicate the, the message there. Uh, Dan Andrews has, well, he hasn't threatened a, another statewide lockdown. He's uh, threatened further statewide restrictions, but he has uh, indicated a, a regional uh, approach to managing coronavirus now. Uh, so the reason it's broken down by local, local government areas now is because uh, they will look at if it continues to get bad in the northwest uh, locking down uh, those local government areas while relaxing restrictions in uh, local government areas uh, where uh, there is no coronavirus cases and potentially relaxing restrictions there so allowing increased uh, capacity there so if things continue to go well in the city of frankston uh I won't be subjected to a second lockdown and fingers uh, crossed uh, uh, that restrictions will be uh, relaxed around here as well. Also, another development today is uh, the military uh, has been called into marriage hotel quarantine, uh, which had been managed by private uh, security uh, guards who had been getting infected by return travellers. There's been an increase in return travellers. And then those security guards have been going home and infecting their families, which that's a colossal mess up. So New South Wales, the reason why there'd been no breaches in their hotel quarantine uh, is because uh, they had the, the military called in. So this is a sensible a, a sensible development. Uh, I know that it's freaked a lot of people out, the, the news reports of the military coming into uh, Victoria. Mainstream media is out to scare us again. They're only coming to manage the hotel quarantine and they'll do a much better job at making sure the virus is contained there uh, than those private uh, security guards. And uh, it's as a result of the uh, the increase uh, in uh, case daily cases uh, in uh, Victoria, uh, panic buying has uh, occurred at supermarkets again. The second wipe it's been called uh, because uh, uh, people are buying uh, loads and loads of toilet paper again, and you know the old saying the. Uh, uh, the uh, the old saying is, I think it's uh, I, 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 Einstein. Uh, if you do the same thing and expect a, a another result, that's hardly intelligent. And it's clear the super well the supermarkets did not close uh, during the uh, the lockdown. And so and of course, how is buying toilet paper going to uh, help help protect uh, you and your family from coronavirus and I wonder if these are the same panic buyers as last time, because uh, haven't you haven't you still got six months worth of supplies uh, that you bought during the first wave of panic buying? Uh, so Woolworths today announced that they were uh, applying purchase limits again uh, to uh, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, paper towels, flour, rice, long life milk, uh, eggs, uh, pasta. Uh, that it was two uh, per customer now, uh, just to tell. Well, they 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 were, they said they were 
applying a precaution uh, to the current surge, but maintain that uh, they can keep up with demand and make sure that uh, customers can still get what they need. Uh, because you remember during the first wave of panic buying, uh, elderly pensioners and the vulnerable, they missed out on their weekly supplies of, of toilet paper. It was incredibly uh, distressing uh, during, during that time. And uh, it's, you remember that uh, all the, the the lefties on Twitter were in love with Dan Andrews, claiming that uh, his lockdown had uh, saved uh, the state of Victoria from coronavirus. But it's actually for, all falling apart for for him now. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we all haven't forgotten uh, about uh, last Sunday's sixty minutes uh, with uh, he, his uh, former cabinet minister and former Labor colleague Adam Somniak uh, using taxpayer funded staff to, to branch stack. Uh, he also lost Dan Andrews two other ministers. He's had to, uh, he has to swear in on Monday three uh, new, new ministers. And uh, we've seen uh, the uh, mobile testing sites. Uh, they've had to basically shut down before they've even opened because they've run out of testing kits. And it appears to me that the reason why Dan Andrews just went to such a draconian lockdown in Victoria, because I think he knew that he was uh, under prepared and that his authorities could not hope. And so he just put everyone under house arrest, hoping that that would suppress the virus. But now it's all unraveling now. And of course, the, the Cedar Meats outbreak, 98 cases have been traced to that outbreak, and that is within the Brimbank uh, Hume council areas. The, the, the one that uh, the Andrews government, government were very secretive uh, about uh, at the beginning. Uh, so it's all starting to come undone now, and uh, it turns out uh, Dan Andrews' testing uh, regime was actually behind the eight ball of, of other states. So it hasn't done such a, a great job. And it seems that, well, the first lockdown didn't work. So why would a second lockdown work? And of course, now this has uh, national ramifications uh, with the, the states that have their borders shut, WA, South Australia, Tasmania, Queensland, Northern Territory, their state leaders are reconsidering uh, whether to open their state borders. A, South Australia and Queensland, they're looking to basically open their, their state borders to everyone uh, except uh, Victorians uh, from those outbreak hotspots. Uh, New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian uh, advised uh, uh, local uh, uh, businesses in tourist hotspots in New South Wales to deny service uh, to uh, Vic uh, Victorians, basically. Uh, 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 treat, uh, treat Victorians like uh, like like the plague, and so there's a lot of there's a national pile on at the moment against uh, uh, Victorians because of this of uh, of this new outbreak. And well, as a Victorian myself, I'd basically advise all the other states and territories open up your borders to each other, but just uh, close up the Victorian borders, build a wall around it, whatever. For me. Uh, within the in the southeast, uh, there there not uh, not being as many active cases as there is in the northwest. I reckon build a moat around the Yarra Yarra River. Uh, don't let anyone north of the Yarra in the in the south. So national cabinet meets on Friday to decide this. All the other uh, remaining Victorian states and states and territories are all doing extremely well uh, with the with the numbers. So I'll continue to monitor uh, the, well, we get the, the daily announcement uh, from Dan Andrews and the, the health officials every, every morning about the, the new uh, uh, daily statewide coronavirus cases. So I'll await uh, Dictator Dan's press conference tomorrow morning. See how many new cases there are. There was uh, 20 today. Uh, there was 17 yesterday. Uh, so we'll see how this goes and whether they can sort out these mobile uh, testing sites. And we'll also monitor the panic buying as well. We'll see how the situation uh, in Victoria un unfolds. The state of emergency in Victoria has been extended until July 19th. So no, I, I don't think any decision, major decisions will be made on whether to relax or ramp up 
coronavirus uh, restrictions. But uh, as I said, we'll monitor uh, the, the daily amount of cases and where they are uh, in Victoria. This is Will's Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net.